Barbie's little sister is gonna love this. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel, and if you're new here, I'm Stella, and I love making miniatures from Barbie's dollhouse using Millie cardstick. In today's video, I'll show you how to make this miniature convertible crib and some accessories for your dolls. And as always, I have a free printable template to help you make your own version. You'll find all the infos and the download link in the video, so now let's get started! To make a headboard, cut this part of the template 3 or 4 times, and as usual, I suggest using cardstock from old packaging for this, since it's thick but easy to cut, and we all have tons of it at home. Glue all these layers to this part, also cut into cardstock, and the final piece should be approximately 4mm thick. Repeat this process to make a second identical panel, then cover both panels with a couple layers of acrylic gesso. This will make the surface appear more even in color and texture. And to smooth out the edge of the panels, which might be a little rough looking because of all the layers that it's made of, you can also use some speckle or 3D paint. And as always, you can find a short list of all the supplies I used for this project in the description. Oh, and here's a little trick. Once the paint has dried, sandwich the cardstock pieces between two layers of parchment paper and let them rest under a heavy book for a few hours. This will soak up all the humidity in the paint, strengthening the paper and preventing it from bending over time. To make a mattress frame, cut this part 3 or 4 times and once again glue all the layers together. The resulting piece should be roughly 3mm in thickness, paint it with a couple of layers of acrylic gesso, then set it aside for a moment. Next, cut a bunch of these strips and attach them in groups of 2 or 3 layers each. Cover the strips with acrylic gesso first. And color them with a light shade of brown paint to mimic the look of wood. Alternatively, you can use a handful of craft sticks. Glue these lads to the frame we set aside earlier, making sure they're evenly spaced. And this is completely optional, but I decided to coat the slats with a thin layer of clear varnish to make them look a little bit shiny. At this point, we should have these three elements ready. Some of them like this. We can now begin working on the rails of our miniature crib. Cut this part 3 or 4 times and glue layers together. The final piece should measure roughly 2mm in thickness. And just a reminder, if you have a Cricut or a Silhouette cutting machine, you can use my digital templates, which you can find in my shop, linked in the description box. Cover the rail with acrylic gesso first. Then, to achieve a wood-like finish, paint it in a light shade of brown acrylic. Next, cut these parts of the template four times. Glue two of the strips to the top of the crib's rail, one per side, making sure that they're perfectly centered. There should be a 3mm space on both ends of the rail. Glue the remaining two to the rail's bottom part, Then cut these strips and attach the longer one to the rail's top edge and the shorter one to the opposite edge. Paint these strips with acrylic gesso or white acrylic paint. Then if you want, you can add a touch of clear varnish to the wood colored parts to make them appear more shiny. We'll have to make two identical rails, slide them into the grooves in the headboards and optionally you can glue one of them in place, although it's not necessary. To convert our miniature crib to a little toddler bed, we'll need to swap one of the rails for a shorter panel. To make one, simply cut this part 3 or 4 times, attach all the layers together until we get to a thickness of 2mm. Then paint the resulting panel with a couple of coats of acrylic gesso. To make the legs of our miniature crib, cut this part a dozen times and glue all the layers in two groups, each approximately 3mm thick. Once again, we'll have to cover the cardstock with acrylic gesso first, then paint it in a light shade of brown to make it look like wood. And finally, optionally, coat it with a clear varnish to get a slightly glossy surface. Glue legs to the bottom of the crib this way. To make a mattress, cut this part into a lightweight type of cardstock, then fold the sides along these lines. And 
some glue to tabs to create this little box. Then take a piece of fabric big enough to cover the box completely. And yeah, I've used the same old napkin set that I've been using for pretty much all of my miniatures. Fix the fabric to the back of the mattress using double-sided tape. Should end up with this. Place the mattress into the crib. Then, to make a little duvet, cut this pattern into paper and trace it onto a piece of patterned fabric. Add about half a centimeter of seam allowance and cut. Cut another identical rectangle in a plain colored fabric. Then place one piece on top of the other, making sure that the printed sides of the fabrics are facing inward. Sew the two pieces together along this margin, leaving a small opening so that we can reverse the fabric afterwards. I also suggest you press the duvet with an iron to flatten the seams. Finally close the little opening and you can either stitch it or if you're as lazy as I am, you can simply close it with a little bit of white glue. To make a little pillow, trace this pattern onto the same fabrics we used for the duvet, patterned one and a plain colored one. Sew them together. Then turn the pillow inside out to reverse it. And fill it with some cotton or fiber fill. Once again, I used white glue to close the little opening on the side. You can follow a similar process to make a star-shaped pillow. And this time around, I chose to hand-stitch my pillow because I'm simply not good enough at using a sewing machine. I also suggest that in this case you trim the excess fabric after you've sewn together two sides. And I also would recommend cutting the fabric in these points to make it easier to reverse it later. And since the fabric I used seemed prone to fraying, I put a little bit of fray check on the edges before turning the pillow inside out. To make this cute little bunny ragdoll, cut this pattern, then take a piece of plain colored fabric, fold it in half and trace the pattern on one side. Stitch the two parts of the fabric together along this outline, leaving as always a small aperture on one side. Trim away all the fabric in excess. And at this point, I once again put some fray check on the edge to prevent the fabric from fraying. Just suited for the star shape below, I suggest cutting the fabric in all these points to make it easier to reverse it. And we're definitely gonna need to use a pair of tweezers to do this. At this point, we can start stuffing our little bunny doll with cotton or fiber fill, starting from the legs. And once they're nice and full, sew a line between them and the body. This will allow us to bend them later so that our bunny can sit in the crib. Fill the rest of the bunny's body and head. Then stitch or glue shut the opening on the side. To make the bunny's arms, cut this part and trace it onto a piece of fabric, fold it in half. Sew the two halves together, leaving a small opening on one side. 
then trim away the excess fabric before reversing it. Stuff the final piece with cotton or fiber fill. Then close the little opening with glue or by stitching it. And of course we'll have to make two of these. Attach the arms to the bunny's body either by gluing them or if you want them to be movable by stitching them this way. I'm not sure if you can tell from the video but essentially you have to sew one arm first. Then pull the sewing thread into the body and towards the opposite side and finally stitch the other arm in place. To make the bunny's ears, trace this part on another piece of fabric. Then fold it in half or place it on top of another piece of fabric and sew the two layers along the outline, leaving a small gap on one side to reverse the fabric later on. Cut away the excess fabric. Then use a pair of tweezers to turn it inside out. Once again, I suggest you press the fabric with an iron to flatten the seams, glue the small opening shut, then trace and cut this part onto a piece of felt, non-woven fabric or any other soft material that won't fray. Glue it to the base of the ear with white glue and obviously we'll have to make two of these as well. Slide a piece of sewing thread from one end of the ear's base to the other and pull so that it will fold like this. Then stitch it to the bunny's head and finally repeat the same step for the other ear. Next, use a black pen or a fine tip marker to draw a nose and eyes on the bunny's face. To make a tiny dress for a little bunny, trace this part of the template on another piece of fabric. And by the way, I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but I traced all the patterns using a heat erasable pen, which is very convenient because its ink disappears with, well, heat, and you don't have to worry about it being visible in the final piece. All you need is an iron. Add a 5mm seam allowance, then trim the fabric in excess. Sew a hem around the armholes. Now cut the neckline into a few smaller sections so that it's easier to fold. Then stitch another hem. At this point we can sew together the front and back of the dress, stitching the fabric along this line. Next, let's sew the back of the dress. We'll have to connect the sides just up until a centimeter from the outline's edge and then we'll sew a hem on the upper parts. Lastly, stitch a hem to the dress's bottom edge. And we can finally dress our little bunny. I decided to stitch the top part of the dress's back since I don't plan on changing it, but if you want to be able to remove it, I'd suggest you add a little snap button. And the first part of my miniature dollhouse nursery is ready. Don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss the next parts. As promised, here's the link to the free printable template. And if you want to find out how you can make more dollhouse miniatures with paper, you may want to watch this playlist next. And this is all for today's video, until next time, bye!